Hello and a very warm welcome. Canada driver ratings. All 20 drivers covered. One being awful, 10 being excellent. Let's get into it. Driver ratings. Who's going to score high? Who's going to score low? We'll start with Lewis Hamilton, the man who shines around Canada, but didn't yesterday. 4 out of 10. And yes, I have marked him down. Bloody awful. All weekend. A track he shines round didn't perform. Hammered by Batas all weekend. And just nowhere. And I'll do Kimi Raikkonen next. Because I thought these two were as bad as each other. 4 out of 10 again for Kimi. Both battered by their teammate all weekend. Just like Hamilton. Rubbish. Uh, Sebastian Vettel's winning the race. Kimi 6. It's not good enough. So, Valtteri Bottas, 9 out of 10. I thought Bottas was superb, but Vettel was just that bit better. Solid all weekend, beat Hamilton all weekend. He could be a serious title contender this season, if not for bad luck. China, virtual safety car, cost him the race. Baku was winning, got a puncture. So there's a lot of points down the drain. Um, so yeah, he could be a serious contender. Who says he won't be, but he could have a lot more points than he has. Sebastian Vettel, the star of man, the star of everything. 10 out of 10 for Vettel. Back to his Red Bull days where he drives perfectly. Champions drive. Faultless all weekends. Pole, race win. Leads the title race by one point. Led every single lap. Driver of the day. An absolutely perfect weekend for the German. Ah, who do we go on to next? Hulkenberg. Now, Hulkenberg. I think I'm missing someone on my list here because we've done Hamilton, but ask him Vettel. No, we're on to Reynolds. I've just got Red Bull lower down. Hulkenberg, 8 out of 10. Mr. Consistent is back. Best of the rest all weekend. Qualifying in the race. And he's just... He's one of them drivers, probably never going to get a top team, Nico Hulkenberg. But he is underrated and consistent. Carlos Sainz, 7 out of 10. All I've got written down for Sainz is brilliant race, brilliant qualifying. Of course, Hulkenberg was 7th. Sainz finished 8th. So yeah, good weekend by Sainz. Really starting to get to grips with a Renault. Roman Grosjean, 5 out of 10. And the reason I give him 5... He didn't get to do qualifying, so he literally pulled out the garage, smoke went everywhere, and he couldn't do qualifying, so I give him 5 out of 10. Started last, impressive comeback to finish P12, and he beat Kevin Magnussen, even though he started last. On to Kevin Magnussen, 2 out of 10, horrendous. Good first 5 races for Magnussen, but Monaco struggled and Canada struggled, so... And he gets beat by Grosjean, who started last. Right, here we go on to the Red Bulls. Daniel Ricciardo, 6 out of 10. Solid, nothing spectacular. Jumped Lewis Hamilton. Stayed out, got the overcut on Hamilton. That boosted him up to 4th. And then it was followed a leader for the rest of the race. So, 6 for Ricciardo. On to Max. 9 out of 10. Back on the podium. Massive confidence boost. He, he's really... Um, he had a good drive at Monaco, but massive confidence boost. Got a uh, podium at Spain. Podium at Canada. Fastest in most of the practice sessions, so a great weekend for Max. He gets 9 out of 10. Now, on to the brightest talent that F1 has at the minute. Charles Leclerc. Once again, 7 out of 10 for Leclerc. Once again, in the points, in a car that shouldn't really be in the points, outperforming the car, huge talent, very consistent. Third time he's been in the points. Scored at Baku, Spain and Canada. And he's just great. What a great F1's looking bright. Ericsson, 2 out of 10. Beaten by Leclerc once again, as I said he would be. And Leclerc's in the points, so why isn't Ericsson? Same car, same machinery, that's my argument for that. Brendan Hartley, 3 out of 10. 
great qualifying. He actually got my star of qualifying. I never did a qualifying video. I was away, had no internet, but I was thinking to myself, really good performance. Under pressure, I think he got P12 in qualifying. So yeah, beat Gasly. But in the race, was an innocent party. Was ambitious, round turn five, but he's there. He can't like go invisible. So Stroll was to blame for the accident. And he's under huge pressure. Will he keep his seat? I believe he will be replaced. But you can't judge him on that race. Because I thought he had a good qualifying. And who knows what he would have done in the race. He got wiped out in the race. But yeah. I see Brendan Hartley. I see Danny Kvyat all over again. He's not liked. They don't like him. They don't really want him in the car. So Brendan Hartley will probably be out of the Toro Rosso and someone else in. Pierre Gasly, I'll give him, I don't know with Gasly, he had a good qualifier, I've got Hartley 3, with Gasly 4 I'll give, tough weekend, tough qualifying, beaten by Hartley, but good race, P19, had a good engine penalty, and he gets back to P11. Now, on to Lance Stroll, the home favourite, 1 out of 10, dreadful home race, caused the first crash pilot with Hartley he was to blame and you can't mark him any better Sergei Sorotkin the man who's been on 16 pints of special brew that's what he sounds like anyway 1 out of 10 last in the race the car's rubbish he's not good enough every year you have it there's a driver that's not good enough we've had it with Maldonado he's out Gutierrez out Ericsson He's still here, but last season, not good enough. And um, this season, it's Sergei Sorotkin. He is simply not good enough for F1. He never was F2 champion, so did he really deserve his seat in F1 anyway? Ocon, 7 out of 10. Great qualifying and race, good points, and he was super brave in the race to go round the outside of Hulkenberg. But the pit stop cost him, and he got jumped by not only Hulkenberg, but Sainz as well. Perez, another one who had a good qualifying, but race ruined. Going down the main straight with Carlos Sainz. Perez, he said Sainz should be black five, but to me it looked like Perez just misjudged it, turned in a bit early. Had to pit, and that ruined his race. Alonso, five out of ten. Now five's just a standard mark. Um, but... Once again, would have got points. The car lets him down again. Second week in a row that he's running in the points and the car lets him down. He is off to Le Mans. Let's hope he can win that. But, I mean, it's a disaster, isn't it? McLaren, Reynolds, I thought they're going to be competitive. Yes, it's better than the Honda days. But the Reynolds, bad reliability, just like the Honda. So, And on last but not least... Well, he nearly was last. Stoffel van Dorn, 1 out of 10. If Hartley's under pressure to keep his seat, then Stoffel van Dorn should be. He's been absolutely dreadful recently. Really bad again. Should be a driver under pressure with Brendan Hartley. I mean, if Hartley's under pressure, van Dorn has to be. Alonso battered him, quali the race. But Alonso has no reliability. So there is all 20 drivers covered. Uh, who scores highly this week? Vettel's gets a 10. Uh, Bottas gets 9. Max gets 9. The low scorers, Stoffel van Dorn, Stroll, Sorokin and Kevin Magnussen. And I mark down Lewis Hamilton and Kimi Raikkonen because I don't think that's good enough. The car they're in, they were nowhere near their teammates all weekend. Inexcusable. If, if you have a shit weekend, I'm going to say it how it is. Whether I'm a fan of the... I mean, look at Max. I'm a fan of Max. I've marked him down for some of his races this season. I'm a fan of Hamilton. I've marked him down. I thought he was awful. So, yeah, there we go. On to um, Paul Ricard we go. Driver ratings done. Race reaction done. Leave your comments. We'll always reply. And I'll see you for Paul Ricard. Adios. Thanks for watching.